All right, y'all, thank you so much for, uh, for coming. Uh, my name is Greg, and if you couldn't tell by the video, I'm giving the, the talk on how I taught my dog uh, to text selfies. Um, so first off, I just want to say um, it's a huge honor to be here. The first time I ever gave a talk at a tech conference was at uh, Mountain West Ruby Conference about three and a half years ago. I spoke on developers and depression. And I had only been uh, coding Ruby for about a year. And the community was so amazing um, and, and, and has continued to be as I've gone to other Ruby conferences. And I now serve on the developer evangelism team uh, for a company called Twilio and have the privilege of going to a lot of conferences uh, for a lot of different languages. And uh, the Ruby community still always very much feels like home. So uh, I've had the privilege of speaking at RailsConf before. This is my first time at RubyConf. And it just, I mean, it really is kind of a, a bit of a dream to be here. So thank you all. Uh, and if any of the organizers uh, are here, I much appreciate the having me up here. Uh, so I'm Greg. I uh, now live in New York. Uh, my wife, daughter, and I just moved to Brooklyn about four months ago after uh, 11 years in Chicago. And we're absolutely loving it. Uh, we just wanted to try something new while our daughter, she'll turn uh, two on Monday. Uh, while she was young, we didn't have to worry about school too much and stuff. Um, and so, uh, so that's pretty awesome. This is not our entire family, though, uh, as you may have guessed from the text uh, or from the title. Uh, about a year before uh, Emma came along, uh, we got Kyra. Uh, she was 12, this is the day we brought her home. She was about 12 weeks old uh, when we got her. Uh, she's a rescue. We're not really sure what she is. We think she might be part Shiba Inu. Uh, there's this other dog called an Australian Kelpie. Uh, we're not really sure, but she's really smart. Uh, she's really, really smart. And, uh, you know, she has a stubbornness that often comes along with that. Uh, and so very early on, we realized that we were going to have to uh, put some effort in there if, if we, you know, wanted to like her. Um, which is still a challenge sometimes. Um, but there's this awesome book uh, that we eventually found. It's called uh, Don't Shoot the Dog. And uh, it's written by a, a woman who used to train dolphins at SeaWorld uh, and then has done a whole bunch of other animal training. The crazy thing about reading this book, uh, is you get a few chapters into it, is not actually about pet training, it's about behavioral conditioning. And so all the tricks that they teach you also, like I, you can't really read it here, but they also work on small kids <laughs> and, like, uh, and, and like coworkers and whatnot. And, um, and it's all, just all about positive reinforcement. You know, it, as it turns out, yelling at your dog just doesn't work. You know, the, the trick is that you, uh, you, you find something in their behavior that's worth complimenting and rewarding and you reward it. And then you just kind of keep doing that moving the goalposts. So, um, you know, I, being the rebellious type, reading this book, reading the title, uh, one of the first things uh, I, I did was shoot my dog uh, and teach her how to do that. Um, but then one day we were uh, laying in bed and we had this floor lamp next to our bed. It's from Ikea. And it's got a little uh, switch on it that you just stomp on in order to turn the light on and off. And I'm like laying in bed one night and I'm about, you know, I'm done reading. And I look at this lamp and I'm like, I don't want to get out of bed to go turn that off. Like, I shouldn't have to get out of bed to turn that off. I have a dog. Uh, and so we start setting down this path of trying to teach Kyra how to turn a light on and off. And we would just take her over there and we would at first just take her paw and we would just gr like grab it and then place it on the, the switch. And if she just made contact, we just reward her, we give her a treat. Um, and then we would do that, and then we, once she got to the point where she could walk over and she could push it, and, like, and actually make contact, then we start pushing down on her paw, and it would click, we'd say, you know, we preface all this by saying light, and then we give her a treat. And so we ended up getting to the point, uh, it took a couple weeks, but we got to this point where we could then stand across the room and say light, And so now I started thinking, I have a dog that can press a button. <laughs> I wonder what I can do with that. Uh, and as I said, I work for Twilio. Um, for those of you uh, who have heard of us before, 
Uh, we're best known for our API that makes it really easy to send and receive text messages uh, and also place and receive phone calls. Um, and for a, a good chunk of our history, you could only do text messages. A couple years ago, right around the time Kyra learned how to press a button, uh, we also launched MMS so we could send picture messages. And so now I'm like, man, how do we get her to press a button and send me a text message? Um, and I had no idea how to do this because I had never done any hardware hacking. I had taken a single electronics engineering class in college and was terrible at it. Uh, I really liked um, uh, software because of the instant gratification and the whole hardware world just seemed very intimidating to me. Um, I did a little bit of Googling and I discovered this thing called the Arduino Yoon. And the, it, who here has played with an Arduino before? All right, cool, so about half the room. So the big difference between an Arduino and an Arduino Yoon, like the standard Arduino, um, is that the Arduino Yoon is Wi-Fi enabled and that it also has a second processor on it. So it has the two processors. One does all the stuff you think of with an Arduino. The other one runs a stripped down version of Linux called OpenWRT. Um, and was able to really just using basically the second example in the getting started Arduino uh, book which is how do you press a button. So if you ever played an Arduino before, the hello world of hardware hacking is blink, like make a light turn on and off. Hello world plus one is do that with a button. All right, and so this is the circuitry required to, to push a button. It's literally like four pages into the getting started guide. Um, and then the way that you would control the Arduino Yoon is uh, from the software side is you would SSH into it. And so for the last couple of years, I've been uh, actually about a year and a half now, Mostly using the Arduino Yoon, uh, it comes with Python installed, and so I learned just barely enough Python to, to kind of pull this off and was able to do the same thing with PHP. Uh, and then started playing around with Ruby, which is my, my first language of choice. Um, and it could barely run Python, barely run PHP, and it could, I could hello world in Ruby, um, but it just wouldn't hold up with gems, like you couldn't install gems on it. Like it um, and then there's all these other limitations that came into it. So I started wondering and started experimenting and, and wanted to play with the Pi. Uh, because as I gave this talk at other conferences, people would come up to me like, well, couldn't you do the same thing with the Pi? And I was like, well, I don't know. Um, well, as it turns out, the Raspberry Pi 3 costs half as much as the Arduino Yoon. So the Arduino Yoon is about $70. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 is $35. Uh, additionally, Arduino discontinued the Arduino Yoon uh, about a month ago. You can still get it outside of the United States, uh, but you can no longer buy it inside of the United States except from suppliers who still have inventory left. Uh, so for the last few weeks, been playing around with the Raspberry Pi and it is so much better, <laughs> like uh, so much better. Uh, and it, it has just been an absolute joy. So um, what I wanted to do for the rest of this talk is build this device so that we could let a dog text selfies. Um, and so we're gonna look at just the components real quick and then we're gonna write some software, some Ruby code, uh, to power this thing. Um, so the first thing we needed is a camera. The Raspberry Pi does have a official branded uh, camera. Um, it costs $40, so it actually costs more than the Pi. It's pretty small, the cable's pretty small on it, um, which could be super useful in a lot of applications, right? Um, what I ended up using is just a standard USB camera in part because I had one laying around. Only cost 20 bucks. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 has uh, four USB ports on it. Um, and so you just plug it right in and it just works. Like the drivers on it just work without installing anything else. Um, no matter how many treats we gave her, Kyra never learned to type. So uh, we just needed a big red button that she could press. This thing cost 10 bucks. We housed it all in a, a cigar box. Cigar, bo cigar boxes you can buy for about $2 from your local uh, cigar shop because they're just trash to them. So once you sell, they sell all the cigars, you can just buy the box. Um, and so it makes really beautiful and sturdy enclosures for uh, your hardware hacking projects. Uh, this is what the internals look like. And so we have the Pi on the left and then this breakout board. And then if you take a look at the circuit, it is just about as simple, well, it's exactly as simple. It just looks a little more complicated, but it's the same circuit that we're doing on the Yoon. Here's a different view. Uh, and basically we just have a circuit running and then it runs into the button. And when you press the button, it sends a signal to a pen and it just registers that there's current flowing through that pen. And we'll look at how we read that. And so this is what the internals of this box look like uh, as of this morning. Uh, probably need to figure out how to clean that up a little bit. Um, but we're talking about super, super simple stuff. And in order to make all this hardware work, we just need three steps. 
So we need to take a picture, we need to upload the picture to the cloud, and then we need to send a text message with that picture. All right, so I thought we'd just write some Ruby, and make that work, sound good? Y'all could flip over to the, the Pi. We were having fun playing with this, getting this up and running earlier. We don't have a monitor here, so I found this is a good way to instill empathy within the audience, is that I'm staring at this right down here as I type once it comes up. Uh, and so we had to increase the font pretty big. Uh, so hopefully y'all in the back uh, can still see it. No luck there? Uh, let's see here. Oh, you're absolutely right, my bad. All right, very good. All right, cool. Um, can you, in the back, can you see this okay? You can read it? All right, fantastic. All right, so the very first thing we need to do, so I'm, I'm in a, uh, a directory here, uh, my Ruby's directory, uh, and just have a folder called Ruby Comp. First thing we need to do is take a picture. So I'm just gonna create a new, uh, uh, new Ruby script here, and we will call this uh, take picture. And this is actually pretty simple. Um, we actually aren't, well, I mean, we're technically doing it in Ruby, Oh. Uh, but there is a shell script, uh, not even shell script, there's just a command you can run in Linux, a little utility from the command line called FS webcam. And you can just pass FS webcam a resolution and a file name. And once you do that, I'm just using backticks here, so I'm having Ruby execute this, uh, this command. And when I run that, I've got the, uh, the webcam right here. It's plugged in to the, to the Pi. So I'm gonna run this here. So if the people in this uh, area right here wanna smile, uh, and you can see that it captures the, the, uh, the picture, and then now we have uh, pic.jpg that's in here. And if I go to this little, little small for me, so let's try it like this. Uh, we'll go to, oh boy, we're gonna have to type this, uh, ruby slash ruby conf slash pic dot jpeg. There we go, all right, cool. All right, so you can see we have a picture uh, taken from the webcam uh, of everyone right here, all right? And so step one, pretty easy, complete one line of code, really just running uh, a shell command from Ruby. All right, so step two is we need to upload that picture to the cloud. And strictly speaking, this isn't, uh, for our particular use case, a necessary step. Um, in just a minute, we're gonna open up a tunnel so that we can have direct access, uh, give, our U, or give our Raspberry Pi here a publicly accessible URL. We could do that, um, but what I wanna do instead is take this picture and put it up to a place that can handle some load and put it up to a place that's not connected the internet via a, a hotspot, and that's not running on a low power uh, computer, all right? And plus there's lots of other use cases for uploading, uh, uploading files to the cloud. So we will create a new file called upload picture, and we are going to use the Dropbox SDK, and you could do this with several different methods. S3 was the one that first came to mind with me, for me, but the API is just pretty terrible, and the documentation is pretty terrible. Dropbox has done a fantastic job with their API and with their documentation. Uh, it was really easy to get up and running. And if you have a Dropbox account, which I would imagine most of you do, uh, you can just create a uh, app. Uh, you go to developers, uh, dropbox.com slash developers slash app. You'll create a new app, and then you can create an access token. Here we go. Uh, and we'll create this access token right down here. And we'll copy that. And with that access token, we can, here, let's put this into a method. So we'll call this upload picture. So we will uh, create a new client and we will pass in an access token that we just copied from our dashboard. Oh. And by the way, if you all see me make a mistake, uh, feel free to shout it out. All right. Um, 
once we have that client, we'll go ahead and we'll open up that picture. And then we can use the client to put the file. We'll give it a name on Dropbox. We'll just give it the same name. Uh, and we'll pass that file in here. That gives back a response with some information about the file we just uploaded. Inside of that response is a path to the uh, file, like in the, the Dropbox file system. So we'll grab that path, and then if we um, pass that path into a second API call called media, then it will return another hash, and inside that hash will be a publicly accessible URL. All right, and then we'll just have our method here uh, return that URL. All right, and then just for, uh, to see if this works, why don't we output that URL, or we'll output that URL by running our method here. All right, so let's see what happens there. All right, cool, so we got a URL back. So we'll take this URL and we'll copy that. Whoa. I think I'm getting old. Either that or, you know, I just need to bump this up a little more. Oh, there we go. All right, cool. So now we have our file that was just on our Raspberry Pi. We've been able to take it to upload to the cloud. So you can imagine that there's a whole bunch of useful use cases for this, right? Being able to take files that you create on your Pi, putting them up there. Dropbox makes it so incredibly easy. Just a few lines of code, uh, just a few clicks on your dashboard, and you can do that. All right, so that was step two. Uh, we did step one. Uh, we took a picture, um, oh, and uh, uploaded it, and then now we need to um, uh, send that text message. So for that part, we're gonna use Twilio. And I came on here and searched for a phone number. So everything you do on the SMS and on the phone side is going to start with a Twilio phone number. So these cost uh, $1 a month. Um, and I'm gonna come on here and I'm gonna buy a phone number in the 513 area code here. This will be a local number. Um, I, don't, I don't even know if long distance is really a thing anymore. Um, I feel like that's one of those things my daughter's never gonna really understand. Uh, but okay, so I just purchased this number. And if y'all wanna pull out your phones, this is gonna be a lot more fun if it's interactive. Um, so in just a minute, I'm gonna have you text your name to this phone number that we just purchased here. All right, um, and what's gonna happen when you send that text? is that Twilio is going to make an HTTP request to whatever URL I put into this, uh, this field right here. So this is our, our message webhook. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is just write a small Sinatra app. And that Sinatra app is going to handle that HTTP request. So let's call this app.rb. Who here has worked with Sinatra before? All right, cool. So for those of you who haven't, Sinatra is just a lightweight web framework in Ruby. Um, I, my guess is that most of us probably use Rails more often when we're building stuff for production. Um, Sinatra, I've been surprised how much I used it once I started working at Twilio. For the stuff you do, the kind of apps you build with Twilio, it's incredibly useful because you can build these web apps that just um, you know, handle HTTP requests in just a single file. So here I'm going to uh, include Sinatra and I'm going to define a uh, endpoint that will handle a post request uh, at slash message. And the way this is gonna work is that when y'all text this number here, uh, Twilio is gonna make an HTTP request to this app. And when you make that HTTP request, much like your browser makes an HTTP request to a server, your browser expects an HTTP response back. And so we're gonna send back an HTTP response. And that response is going to be uh, what we call Twimmel. It's just a set of XML tags that will tell Twilio what you want it to do next. And so we're gonna tell Twilio to reply with a message. And that, me oops, hello caps lock. Uh, and that message, we'll just say, thanks for the text. And if you wanna learn more, Twilio.com slash docs. The getting started guide uh, is, is you know, in Ruby. We'll cover all of this for you. Uh, and it's really easy, like seriously, like five minutes from creating an account, you'll be sending and receiving text messages. Um, it's very similar to Dropbox there. Um, and if y'all want to find me, if you have any questions, you feel free to reach out. Uh, I'm Greggy B on Twitter.
All right, so that looks good. It looks like I have my uh, slash message, slash response, message, response. Looks like I have my quote marks there. So we should be good there. Uh, so let's save this and we will start up, oops, we'll start up our Sinatra server. Now, the problem right now at this moment is that there's no way for Twilio actually to access this server that's running here. Because much like if you just spun up a Rails server on your local machine, uh, there's no publicly accessible URL to get there. So what we need to do is open up a um, tunnel to it. There is this great utility. Who here has used ngrok before? All right, so if you do any, any work, I mean really just about any web development, it'd probably be useful to you. Uh, if for no other reason than it allows you to run something on your local development environment and then give a URL to somebody else so they can check that out. But if you're doing any work with webhooks or building any APIs, it's super, super useful. Um, so I'm gonna open up a tunnel uh, that will accept, accept HTTP requests on port 4567. Uh, this is the port that Sinatra runs on by default. And you can see here that um, ngrok has now given me a URL. And I can take this URL and I can paste it into the webhook here, and I just need to add my slash message endpoint there. So now, when y'all text this number, uh, Twilio will make an HTTP request to that Sinatra uh, app that's running right there. Um, so if y'all want to text, uh, text your name to 513-318-3606. Again, that's 513 3606. And let me know, shout out if you get a, a reply back. You got it? All right, great. All right, cool. So uh, one more time for those of you who haven't texted in, 513-318-3606. Uh, um, and so this is useful, right? Because, uh, and we can just see the requests roll in uh, over here on ngrok, and if we come over to our uh, Sinatra server, we can see those requests rolling in as well. Um, so this is really useful, because now you can text a Raspberry Pi. All right, and so, uh, and folks will use this for things like uh, home automation. Uh, you can, um, they'll use them for things like hooking up to an LED and controlling the LEDs or controlling a display via text message. Um, and so you can text in and you can, uh, what was that? Oh, did you get an egg? Uh-oh, uh, all right, well, we'll put it up on the screen later on. It's Greggy B, G-R-E-G-G-Y-B. Yeah, oh, okay, thank you very much for the heads up on that. Um, uh, so yeah, so now you can text this. And this is really useful because I spent days trying to figure out how to do the same thing on an Arduino Uno, how to open up a tunnel to it, and it was super difficult to do. Um, so now with ngrok, uh, you can open up a tunnel, you can access your, uh, your Raspberry Pi through any publicly accessible URL and also via text message with Twilio. So I wanna kill that server. Uh, so if anyone texts it, you're not gonna get a response back anymore uh, because I, uh, uh, this wasn't, you know, texting the Raspberry Pi wasn't actually essential to having my dog text me selfies. I want text to go the other way. I want my Raspberry Pi to be able to send text messages. Um, so I'm gonna create a new script. We're gonna call this send SMS, uh, dot rb. And here I'll use the Twilio Ruby helper library. And we'll just create a new, uh, a new method here called send text. And syntax is going to use my account SID. So this is uh, my, this I'll find here on my dashboard. I'm gonna copy that. All right. And we'll use my off token, which I will recycle as soon as I get off stage. Please don't get any ideas or take any pictures right now. Uh, and uh, so we got my account SID and my auth token, and once I have those, I can then use the uh, Twilio client, oh, what am I doing? Uh, you can use the Twilio REST client. I'll create a new one by passing in the account SID and the auth token. And once I have that, I can grab a list of all the messages that have been sent to that phone number that we just purchased. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's copy this. 
Uh, yep, very good. Man. Does anyone do that mob programming stuff? It's kind of what this feels like right now. Uh, oh. All right, and now once we have our messages, we can uh, iterate through each message. And with each message, we can, I'll throw a begin in here because sometimes we get a special encoding or whatnot. I can throw this off. I don't want it to ruin it for everyone. Um, but we will try to, we'll output the, well, let's, let's have a moment of truth. Did anyone text in anything profane? Did anyone text in anything that would violate the code of conduct? So remember, I have your phone numbers now. So, all right. All right, so we're gonna output, output what everybody said. Uh, so we're gonna output everyone's names. Um, and then we are gonna use the client uh, to create a new message. And that message is going to be to the number that that message was sent from. It's gonna be from that same Twilio phone number that we just bought. And we're gonna have a body that's gonna say, uh, here's my real Twitter handle, Greggy B. There we go. And if you all wanna email me, you can, uh, I'll throw that in here too, if you have any questions. All right, and I think that should be good. Let's just make sure I got everything all right. Uh, so we're creating new message. We need three pieces of information to send a text message. So we need a number we're sending to, uh, and that's gonna be the, the from of the text that came inbound. We need a, uh, the number we're sending from, it's gonna be the Twilio number, and then we need a body in that message. All right, and so let's, uh-oh, uh what are we doing? All right, and so this actually won't do anything just yet because I defined a method, but I'm not actually running it. So now let's uh, run it here. And we'll see what that does. All right, cool. So we got, uh, we got everyone's uh, messages that came in. Um, and so now we have a way that we could, uh, when you text that Raspberry Pi, um, you could text it commands. And we can pull out the actual body of that text and then use it to trigger different actions uh, in, uh, you know, in, in Ruby here. Oh, hey, Elizabeth, where are you? Hey, what's up? How's it going? Uh, thanks for coming. Oh. Man, a lot of y'all participated, so thank you very much. Um, all right, and has anyone's phone lit up yet with a, with a text? You got it? All right, cool. All right, so, uh, so now we have a Raspberry Pi that can send text messages. So it can receive text messages. It can also send text messages. So thanks for all y'all who uh, participated there. Um, this still doesn't quite get us where we want to go because we don't have a picture associated with that. Um, so what we want to do here is actually pass in a URL to this method. And we just need to add a fourth parameter on here. Uh, uh, let's do this. Uh, and that fourth parameter will be a media URL. And so this is gonna be the URL uh, of a, the picture that we wanna send. So this could be a publicly accessible or needs to be a publicly accessible URL. But any publicly accessible URL you can pass in here just as the fourth parameter and that picture, that media will come through. Typically it's gonna be a picture. You can send uh, animated pictures, you can send GIFs, you can send sound files, you can send small movies too. Most of the time it's gonna be a picture. All right, so we're gonna say that, not, actually let me fix one more thing here. Uh, I don't need to run this right now because we're gonna call this from a different thing in just a second. All right, so, uh, and we'll see if that works here in just a minute. But, um, so now we did, uh, we did two of our three steps. All right, so we took a picture, uh, we sent a text message, uh, soon to be a picture message. Now we need to do it all at the push of a button, all right? Uh, and so we'll clear this out again. And I'm going to create a new file, uh, and this one will be called push it. And actually, let me just look, make sure I named all these right. So take the, all right, cool. All right, so vem, we'll call this one push it. All right, and for this one, we're going to use a uh, helper library called uh, PyPiper. And this is a helper library for the, uh, for the Raspberry Pi that lets you interact with the pens that are on the Raspberry Pi that we have broken out to a breakout board that we then have our input from our button coming to. Um, we'll include the module here. 
And with that module, we're just gonna say after pen, uh, and so we, I have my button plugged into uh, pen four, and then I'm gonna say after, uh, after pen four goes high, then do something. And so what's the something that we want it to do? And that something is we want it to take a picture, upload the picture, and send the text message, all right? So we will require our, uh, we'll do this relative, require relative. Uh, we are going to require relative, uh, take picture, RB. We are, uh, I might have to put this in here. Require relative, and we will do our upload picture and we will require relative our send text.rb. All right, and so now we have uh, the three files that we wrote earlier. We have the three uh, functions that we wrote earlier. Actually, you know, now that I think about this, I didn't actually uh, put this. Let's grab uh, our take picture and let's actually put this into a, uh, a method here. Wrong file name. Did I do, uh, did I use underscore? Oh, thank you so much. All right, perfect. Here, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's move send SMS to send text. Uh, like that. All right, how's that? And what did I do for in that file? Did I name the, uh, yeah, so I named the method, right? All right, cool. All right, so let's open up uh, our push it again, and let's see if it works. If we did this right, it should be as simple as saying now, take a picture, uh, and then we will grab a URL by uploading a picture, and then we will um, use that URL and send a bunch of texts using uh, that, that URL there. Uh, all right, so, and then the last thing I need to do is just tell Pi Piper to wait, all right? And Pi Piper is event-driven, so what it's gonna do is gonna sit there, it's gonna wait to see a high signal on pen four, so that's the one coming from the button, and when it does, it will execute that. Um, and we need to run this with, just because of the way some of the, the configuration set up on the Raspberry Pi and permissions to access the devices, we need to run this with RVM sudo, but we'll just run it and we'll call, say push it. Didn't get any errors. It's just sitting there waiting for us. Um, so if y'all in the audience here want to, uh, oh, looks like we actually ran. Uh, why did we run? Oh, we ran because I included it and ran the Dropbox at the end. I don't think this is gonna screw us up though. Um, so here, we'll do this one more time. All right, so we push the button. We're taking a picture. Write the picture out. We should see, uh, we probably won't actually see the URL. Uh, again, because we did the puts outside of the method, but now we'll be cycling through everybody's name, uh, and then we will be sending a picture that has a URL on it. So if we could, could you switch back over here to uh, the laptop? Um, as much as I'm sure y'all are, are thrilled to get uh, pictures from a webcam of the people sitting in this room right here, that wasn't actually the goal. This is what it looks like uh, when we do it with the dog. And so I had to tell her to sit. I don't know if you all remember from the video you watched when you came in. She hits it pretty enthusiastically. Um, and she comes, press the button. You gotta hold it there because it takes just a second as you saw. But then the, uh, the picture uh, shows up on your phone. So, and that's, uh, that's how I taught my dog to text me selfies. Um, so the, the bigger message, and has anyone gotten a picture on their phone show up yet? Yeah, all right, fantastic, cool. Um, so just to recap, uh, we used just a couple web services here, right? So we use Dropbox, and we use Twilio, and then we use this command line utility. Um, and all of the code that we wrote, and all of the circuitry that we did, was basically just out of the getting started guys for each of these things. So the circuit that's driving this is the second getting started example. The Dropbox code that's running is effectively copy and pasted from the getting started with Ruby guide to the Dropbox API. Um, the code to send a text message uh, with Ruby is basically copy and pasted from the getting started guide with Twilio. Um, and I think that 
I had so much intimidation about actually working, doing this hardware hacking stuff. Um, but I think like a lot of people who, once they get into programming, feel that same thing. As it turns out, some of the coolest, you know, solutions to problems that are out there, right? Like these are problems that seem impossible. Like how do you possibly teach your dog to text selfies, right? But if you break it down into individual components, oftentimes the solutions to these complicated problems are just really simple solutions stacked on top of each other. So if y'all are out there, you know how to write a little bit of code, or if you know how to do a little bit with a Raspberry Pi, uh, and you're willing to do some copy and pasting of code, even if you've never written that before, um, I think you'll be incredibly surprised with the things that you can do in the world of hardware hacking with a Raspberry Pi and just a little bit of Ruby. So again, my name's Greg. I really appreciate y'all hanging out. Uh, thank you very much.